Okay, today we're going to wrap up photosynthesis. We talked about the light dependent reaction, which is known as the LDR or the light reaction, because that is what sunlight is involved in. If you recall that the LDR, the light reaction, takes place in the thylakoid. The thylakoid are those green discs, and that is where sunlight is trapped. So specifically, we are looking at blue and red sunlight uh, being trapped, so the wavelengths from the visible light spectrum. And since it is green, you have green light being reflected away. The whole purpose of the light dependent reaction is to create energy. And our energy is in the form of ATP and NADPH. We're going to shift focus to our second reaction within photosynthesis. It is called the light independent reaction. The LIR, it's also sometimes referred to as the dark reaction just because sunlight doesn't take place and probably more commonly known as the Calvin cycle. So we are focusing our efforts today in the stroma. And the stroma is this fluid that surrounds the thylakoids. So it's almost like the cytoplasm of the chloroplast. So when we look at our light independent reaction, a big takeaway is we are getting that energy from the first reaction. And it is coming to the second reaction because all energies cost something. Or all, I'm sorry, all reactions cost energy. And the energy is made in reaction number one. We see that energy transformation from sunlight to chemical energy. And we're going to use that chemical energy to help finish our reaction. So essentially, what we have remaining in this reaction is simply what's called carbon fixation. So we're in the stroma here. And what is happening in the stroma is carbon fixation. So we are modifying our carbon compounds. So what we have left over is our 6CO2. And in essence, through a series of reactions, this is going to become C6H12O2. And it is going to be powered by the ATP and NADPH from reaction number one. Our end goal in photosynthesis is to make glucose. Now, one last thing about this reaction is when this energy is used up, ATP is broken down. becomes ADP, and ADP is going to be sent back to reaction number one. Same thing with NADPH. NADPH is going to be broken down into NADP, and that's going to be sent back to reaction number one. So you have a cycle of your energy to make sure that can be kind of reused, that there's always going to be energy available for reaction two because you're sending that lower energy form back up to reaction one um, to become a higher energy form. So basically it's kind of a quick review of what we just did. So we are using the energy from reaction number one. And we see that with ATP and NADPH. That is going to help make sure that our carbon fixation is going to completion. And then what happens is when they are used up, they're then sent back to reaction number one to be energized. So we see this nice cycle in terms of it happening. So if we wanted to be a little bit more accurate, we would show reaction one is building it up. And then reaction two 
is breaking it down. Same thing with ADP, reaction one, we're building it up to ATP. Reaction two, we are using it to break it down. And what's happening when we break it down, our six CO2 is becoming our glucose, our sugar, our six carbon sugar. So reaction one paves the way to make sugar and make sure the reaction occurs for reaction two. So our basic steps, you have your reactant coming into play. Whenever you have everything ready to go, you need energy to drive the reaction. And that's what we are getting from reaction one. It goes to completion, making our C6H12O6. And then when the reaction is finished, our lower energy forms, NADP plus, is going to go back to the thylakoid and get built back up in reaction number one. So we do see a little cyclic look with the energy just to make sure that energy is always going to be available. It's not going to be a one-way street. It's going to be sent back to get built back up to be used again. So our big things, once again, from reaction one, we have our energy. Our big thing is our carbon fixation, C6H12O6. So changing our carbon forms into a different look. And then we kind of deplete our energy with our lower energy forms, and these will get sent back to the thylakoid. You kind of see that right here, where the cyclic way of sending things back. So your 6CO2 being formed into a sugar. Before we get there, we need our ATP and NADPH. They will be used and then kind of depleted and set back around as ADP and NADP+. So 6 1 carbon molecules becomes 1 six carbon molecule. So this is why it's referred to as an anabolic or a synthesis reaction. Because essentially, six things are becoming one thing. So quick question. Which of the following is true about the LIR, the light independent reaction? Remember, this is the Calvin cycle or sometimes referred to as the dark reaction. They do get confusing, so it might be better just to refer to them as kind of their com more common names, Calvin cycle or dark reaction. So is it A, they give off oxygen. B, they use the energy from the light dependent reactions of carbon dioxide to make sugars. C, they occur in the thylakoid. D, they require darkness. First off, there's no requirement of darkness. That's just wrong. Always eliminate one that just doesn't really make much sense. They give off oxygen. This is going to happen in the light dependent reaction, number one. Whenever we split apart the water, Oxygen is lost, the hydrogen makes that NADPH. They occur in the thylakoid. This is also wrong because it actually occurs in the stroma. And then our correct answer is letter B.
energy from the light dependent reactions. Remember that's in the form of ATP and NADPH. And then carbon dioxide is going to make our sugar. Second question, how many carbon dioxide are required to make one glucose? This is where it benefits if you know the reaction. Just look at the reaction. Six carbon dioxide. There is no number in front of glucose, so you assume it to be one. So to make one glucose, we need six. So this does get a little repetitive, but now we see kind of big picture thing. We have our reaction number one and our reaction number two. Reaction number one, we have three of our reactants in play. I'm sorry, two of our reactants in play and one product from the splitting of the water. Most importantly is the creation of ATP and NADPH. So this is the only thing continuing, is these two. Reaction number two, we are taking CO2, we're adding in our energies, and that is going to create our glucose. And then to make sure that we can keep this going, the lower energy molecules are sent back to be built back up in the light reaction. So you can kind of see that nice cyclic point of view with our energy. Because the key thing is make high energy bonds. That's why we build up ATP. That's why we build up NADPH. That's why we build up sugar. So true or false, photosynthesis will occur in a plant no matter what. Key words here are no matter what. This is going to be false because we do have some environmental factors that come in play. That's the last thing that we have to talk about. So factors involving or affecting photosynthesis that can either speed up or even slow things down is going to be anything basically involving your reactants. So if you don't have water, remember water is a reactant, not going to happen. Temperature, remember we do have enzymes like ATP synthase. It will only function best at optimum levels. So if it's too cold or too warm, it's not going to work as well as it could. And then finally light. Light is also a reactant. So this is one of the many reasons why deciduous trees get rid of their leaves during winter time. There's not as high of an intensity of light, so the leaves actually become burdensome in regards to energy. They just cost too much. They're not providing enough output compared to their input of energy. So the trees kind of get rid of their leaves and basically go into kind of dormancy mode and just kind of live off their stored sugars until conditions get better. So water, temperature, and light all factor into how well photosynthesis can occur. All right, so final thing, just a quick review on everything. Our energy transformation, we are going from light energy to chemical energy. And we see this through you know, sunlight, and we see chemical in our first reaction when we make ATP and NADPH, or even when you are making glucose. 
The key word here is our energy is in the form of your bonds. Now, from a big picture standpoint, if you want to simplify things, kind of make two boxes. Our first box is our first reaction, which is the light dependent reaction. So this is reaction number one. This occurs in the thylakoid. Okay, now, thinking about what part of the reaction takes place. We have sunlight. And then we also have water. Now, this is going to get rid of oxygen. Now, that's what's happening in our basic uh, photosynthesis equation. But more importantly, what is occurring is we are creating ATP as well as NADPH. Those are going to go to the second reaction. And that reaction is your light independent reaction. So the second step. This happens in the stroma. So go in there and go in there. Now what's happening in the second step is we have We have carbon dioxide coming in, and whenever that happens, we have our energy, which is going to power the reaction. To kind of go through a series of reactions and kind of modify that, we have six of them, modify that to create our C6H12O6. Whenever that reaction is finished, what we see then is our lower energy form. Remember ATP, we have three phosphates. So we are breaking that third phosphate. So ADP is sent back to the light reaction to get built back up. And then for NADPH, we are essentially breaking that bond to hydrogen. So same general idea. We are sending back the other molecule in its lower energy form. And we see that nice cyclic look to make sure that we never really run out of energy because it's constantly being used, sent back to be built back up in step one. So in the end, we have our six water molecules, six carbohydrate, I'm sorry, six carbon dioxide molecules. We have sunlight that is going to create our glucose and six oxygen molecules. So we see how that kind of forms with our two individual reactions. Water, sunlight, oxygen in number one, and then carbon dioxide, and glucose in number two.
right, that is it for photosynthesis. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.